Good morning, and welcome to Talk of the Town on 99.7, 1450WHTC, and WHTC.com. And we welcome you to Talk of the Town for this Tuesday, September the 15th. I'm Gary Stevens. We will have the Master Gardener, Jan Musen, join us a little after 10 o'clock for the Yard and Garden Hour. Patty Vandenberg will join us at the bottom of the next hour with what's new around Holland. We'll have some open line following the 11 o'clock news block. But on this third Tuesday of the month, we devote our first half hour to spotlighting Holland Public Schools. Normally, we are joined by the superintendent, Dr. Brian Davis. He is unavailable today. So Jason Craner, lead spokesman for the district, joins us via the Zoom connection from uh, his offices at the... Uh, administration building off of in the campus of Holland High School on Van Ralty. Good morning, Jason. Hope all is well with you and everybody at Holland Public Schools. We're doing great. Thanks, Gary. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. And if you have a question about what's going on in Holland Public Schools, Jason would be a good mind to answer it at 395-1450, 395-1450. Last we chatted with both Brian and with you, there were a couple of cases of COVID-19 that may have predated uh, the start of classes uh, about three weeks ago for Holland Public Schools. Uh, the latest, not on those particular cases perhaps, but the latest on the COVID-19 situation within Holland Public Schools in light of the fact we saw a couple of cases reported recently at Jenison Public Schools. Yeah, just on Friday, we learned from the health department that there was one additional uh, positive test for a student at West Elementary. Uh, that impacted four close contacts. So that's all there is to report right now as far as our dashboard numbers. Uh, we have one positive case. We have four students out uh, in quarantine, uh, asked by the health department to, uh, to quarantine and to be tested themselves. And uh, no teachers out right now. Uh, all of the numbers that were reported on Friday, uh, all of those students are, and teachers are now back in the buildings. So uh, pretty low numbers considering um, what, uh, what could be and what some districts are experiencing. You mentioned pretty low numbers. We really don't have any, shall we say, uh, benchmarks or any precedent to look at to compare with. But um, as you say, low numbers, perhaps to a certain extent, uh, lower than maybe the district had feared or expected? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think, you know, when, when the last time you talked to Brian, he said that, you know, it's a matter of time. Uh, we, we've said that from the beginning. It's a matter of time until we start to see uh, cases. Uh, I'll, I'll be honest with you. My personal uh, thoughts about it is that we, we would have seen more cases by this point in the school year. I am, I am delighted that, um, that we're talking about three students at this point, uh, and, and none of those students are, are – uh, getting sick from being in contact at school. Uh, all of those cases uh, have either happened before school or happened over the Labor Day weekend. Uh, the, the, the expectation is that they did it over the, the weekend. Uh, none of that has happened because of spread uh, by a classmate or by a student in the school buildings. So I think it really shows how well uh, the the plan is working, but not only the plan that the students and the staff are doing so well following those plans and those guidelines. Uh, I, I just can't say enough at, uh, how much our staff is doing just a wonderful job keeping the students, uh, you know, with the masks on and the masks on over the nose and the mouth, following the arrows in the hallway, uh, giving breaks where kids need uh, to take those masks off. And also, you know, keeping social distance as much as possible and then uh, washing hands. All of this, all of these things are part of the plan and part of the reason that, uh, that this is not spreading. Jason Craner is with Holland Public Schools. If you have a question about Holland Public Schools, he'll be happy to answer it at 395-1450, 395-1450. Uh, based on what your, your contact with staff, with uh, the instructors, with the students as well, do you get a sense that there's not much of, shall we say, um, COVID-19 fatigue or pandemic fatigue that some health experts are concerned about why there's been a, a, a spike in some numbers nationwide in certain areas, certain uh, uh, youngsters perhaps uh, in the college level? You know, they're just getting sick and tired of having to wear the mask and be socially distant and all that. Have you seen any cases of maybe pandemic fatigue among those at Holland Public Schools or is that really, you know, away from the district? 
I am, I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you. I, I think our students and our staff are sick of wearing masks. I think they're sick of um, the, the change schedules and all the other things that we are asking that they do, but I have not seen the fatigue that you're talking about where, um, where they're just taking the masks off, where they're just not following the guidelines. I think our students and our staff recognize that this is how we are going to be together. Uh, I think our students want to be in school and are, are more than willing to do the things that need to happen in order for us all to be together and to have a, a good environment of learning. So yeah, I think people are sick of it. I think we're over it, but we don't wanna go back to what it was like in March and April where we weren't together. Uh, so everyone is really willing to follow those guidelines and do the things that they know will keep us together. Uh, a couple of things along those lines, then we'll take a break. We have to take two breaks today, by the yeah. way, uh, 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 Jason. So first of all, um, district's ready in case we have to dial back and go back to the March and April situations. I would assume the district is ready for that as well. Yeah, we are. Um, and uh, I think it was last, at the beginning of last week, I sent a letter uh, out to parents making sure that they're ready as well. Uh, things like uh, child care. Uh, should we have to close schools because the, the county shuts us down or the state shuts us down? Um, we we want to make sure that uh, parents are ready with daycare. We want to make sure that parents are already getting on their Google classrooms, their students' Google classrooms, so they know how that works. So that when we do go back, and it should be pretty seamless, uh, if we had to shut down on a Friday, we're going to continue school on Monday. And it's going to happen through Google Classroom. Uh, it is the learning management system that we chose because of how familiar people were with it and how simple it is. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, learning continues. We, we learned that, uh, you know, the situation in the, in the spring was not great. Uh, so we wanted to make sure that everybody was ready to go. That's really what we're hoping parents are doing right now. Get, get onto the Google Classroom, learn how to interact with uh, the teachers, learn how to submit uh, uh, assignments for students and to be a part of that classroom. Those are the kind of things you can be doing right now to prepare. Our teachers are doing the same thing. They're preparing lesson plans, not just to deliver in a classroom face-to-face, -face, but should we have to shut down, how are they going to continue seamlessly? Uh, so our teachers are prepared for that. We are making plans for how we will deliver breakfast and lunch for students. Even if we're shut down, we're going to continue to provide those uh, meal services uh, and all of those sort of things. We're ready to go. We're hoping that families are getting ready to go as well because I still, as, as great as the kids are doing and the staff is doing following the guidelines, uh, I still believe that there is going to be a, at least a short time uh, during this school year where we're, we're going to be asked to close the doors and quarant uh, not quarantine, but isolate, uh, you know, like we did in, in the spring. Um, to, to slow the spread for a time. Now, it doesn't mean we're going to shut down for the rest of the school year, but uh, maybe for a couple of weeks. I do believe that that's going to happen uh, at some point, so we should all be ready to go uh, in, in the, the case that that happens. Another point along those lines, and we may be looking beyond when we get through on the other side of the, of the outbreak, Jason Craner, but could we see the end of snow days? <laughs> I've, <laughs> because I've of about that with my kids. We're, we are never going to have another snow day because uh, we won't cancel school. We'll just shift to the online classroom. Um, you know, that, that is one of the things. I, I was talking to one of our students here uh, a couple of weeks ago, and he said something that was so great. Uh, he said that, you know, what, what we're learning right now is not how to deal with right now, but we're, we're learning how to be innovative for the future. And I thought that was so insightful that, Right now, we are learning how, if school is closed, what can we do? So yeah, I, I, think, I think snow days might be done for the future. <laughs> that Google Classroom just uh, gets opened up and instead of uh, going out and sledding on a snow day, you come inside and uh, open up your Google Classroom and, and learning continues. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, uh, the extra days off, a and of course, the the, the you know the, 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 there's a downside. You don't get those snow days to enjoy. But the upside is, if you don't have a you know, if it's not a harsh. If you have a harsh winter, you don't have to worry about having to make up uh, the cl the class days in late yeah. May and early June. 
Well, let me say this though. That is not to say that I think that um, online learning or the Google, Google Classroom is a, a replacement for or even a, a close simile to what face-to-face -face learning provides. And that's why it's so important that we are back in school. We still have um, some folks in the community who are wondering, why are you even back? What, why are you doing this? Uh, and, and we think that it's because um, learning is important and the best way to learn is to be face-to-face. -face. And if we can take the, pro the proper steps to make sure the kids and families and teachers are all safe, then we're gonna take those steps to make sure that learning continues in the best way possible. Let me touch upon one more thing involving the COVID-19 situation and a little bit with the uh, uh, point we were talking about a little bit earlier about pandemic fatigue. Uh, mm -hmm. The resources that the district will provide for students, staff, teachers, who, let's put it this way, they do suffer from, uh, for lack of a better term, pandemic fatigue, but they suffer in an adverse sort of way. I would assume there are resources available to help students get through uh, uh, some of the depressions that could possibly come uh, as a result of being basically cooped up and having to be socially distant and all the uh, safety restrictions we've had to have because of COVID-19. Yeah, we really believe that, uh, you know, you, you take care of the first things first. Uh, you, you can't, you can't, educate a, a child who is struggling with uh, mental health and physical needs and social emo emotional problems. Uh, so we want to address those sort of things. Um, we have uh, on our website uh, a here for you. We like to say at Holland Public Schools that we are uh, right for me, but uh, we are also here for you. And uh, we have a, a place where if, if you need to reach out to someone, uh, to talk to someone at your school, a student can click this form and confidentially send a message that says, hey, I need to talk. Um, on that page is also a ton of resources for parents uh, uh, about how to, uh, who, who to reach out to for help, uh, how to start some of those conversations. So I would encourage uh, any of the students or uh, family members who notice uh, students struggling with uh, mental, physical, or social, emotional health uh, to go to that website, uh, Holland Public Schools, to go to the For Students tab and click Here For You. Uh, and then you'll see all of those resources there on that page. But Gary, that, you're right. That is a, a hugely important thing for us uh, to, to address those needs. Uh, the physical needs, we, we have to address those things. Uh, it's the the hierarchy of needs, right? A kid who's hungry doesn't learn well. That's why we continue to feed children uh, during the, the summer months when school is not in. Uh, we, we need to address the, the, the social, emotional, and mental uh, issues before we can try to even teach anything. And it's so important that we're able to do that. So thanks for me mentioning that and uh, recognizing that that's an important part of what we do. Not only that, but also the 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 the, the situation we're all in right now with the outbreak uh, oh, yeah. but this is national recovery month our scott watson on morning news has been uh, spotlighting uh, those who have overcome and are overcoming uh, not only the depression but other addictions as well and that's part of uh, a district's responsibility to all of its members of its community and the students are just part of its community in that regard yeah and you know i I want to, we're part of this community. We're a big part of what, what happens here. And it's not just the students. We are concerned about that for our parents, for our neighbors. We're concerned about all of those things. So, you know, that's why we make all of those resources uh, available, you know, so you know who to call, you know who to get in touch with to get some of those resources. So yes, very important. Thanks, Gary. Jason, when, if we did not have the uh, outbreak, this would probably be one of the top talking points we would have had coming into the new school year. One of the Holland Public School buildings that was closed all of last year has reopened and reopened safely. Tell us all about it. Yeah, uh, Van Ralty School, which is the home for uh, Holland Language Academy, is open. It was right down to the wire. It was I think two days before where they were laying carpet in some of the, the entryways and the hallways. Uh, but the building is open, a uh, clean bill of health for the building, uh, the mold remediation um, from last year. Uh, kids are all safe there now. Uh, had a lot of work done. What, what's nice is, right, the, all, the, all the carpet, all the soft 
uh, materials had to be removed from the building because of the mold problem. Um, everything had to be cleaned out. It is a clean, basically feels like a brand new building. Uh, so it's nice to be, it's nice to be in there. Uh, what's also nice is that that building has some larger spaces, uh, like a larger uh, cafeteria area that, uh, since it's not being used for lunches this year, can be used for classrooms. Uh, so some of our classes that um, that need some more uh, social distancing with the students can move into those spaces and, uh, and and have some room to breathe, I guess, if, if you want to say that. But yeah, it's nice to have that building back online. And what it allowed us to do this year is Longfellow, where HLA was last year, uh, is now kind of a home base for some of our online learners. Uh, our online learning teachers are setting up shop there. Um, and uh, if there has to be any contact with some of those online learners, uh, there's, there's a home base where they can go to. Uh, we actually had a, a learning resource pickup there last week. Uh, so th there is a, there's a physical location for, for some of that learning that's at least temporary at this point. Let me ask you this, and I think I might have brought it up with you, or I might have brought it up with Brian once uh, the you know the situation, uh, the mold situation first came up, was the fact that um, was the district doing to make sure that this doesn't happen again at any of the other districts' buildings, so that we don't have to worry about shutting a building down for a year to get rid of mold. Yeah, that I I, I know that our our crews are working, uh, especially with with COVID, working extra hard to make sure that uh, the, these things happen. We are replacing, you know, those filters in the the uh, the AC systems or the HVAC systems are all being replaced. Um, I, I believe more frequently now, if not uh, uh, if not even better than that, uh, in order to to track down uh, or to, to keep the uh, the virus from spreading around. So there there are, uh, you know, we're, we're doing everything we can to make sure that the, those things aren't happening. Uh, that I think that the, the specifics for that question are probably a, a facilities uh, question. It kind of caught me off guard a little bit on that, but, um, but we are doing, we're doing what we can to make sure it happens. And actually COVID kind of plays into that a little bit where it's, since we're required to do a lot more cleaning, that it probably is going to help us learn how to do those things better over the long run. I thought you were going to ask me about football. I, that's my that's my last question because unfortunately, Holland High does start its football season Friday. They couldn't have, couldn't have that Muskegon game and then one of the three got canceled. Uh, uh, the Big Reds are coming to J Ray and Sue Smith Stadium. Always exciting, one of the best programs in the state to bring it uh, bring into town. But uh, uh, Sean McManus has got a tough task ahead of him to my, uh, on Friday night. I, uh, I, I've been talking to the coach. I uh, talked to uh, Coach Zach Kapla yesterday. Kids, they're just ready to be out on the field and playing. They know it's going to be a tough game. They know they're outnumbered. Um, they are, they're going against not just one of the best teams in the state. They're going against one of the best teams in the country coming down. So we are, we're excited, though, that they're all going to get an opportunity to play. Uh, I do want to say – Sports are open, uh, all of our sports. I've been to tennis matches. I've been to soccer games. I've been to um, uh, volleyball game is tonight at home. There's swim meets going on. All of our sports are uh, running. Uh, it's fun to see kids running around at the cross country meets with masks on, uh, playing soccer with a mask on. Uh, I don't know how, you know, we would have seen pictures of that a year ago and just been amazed that uh, the kids are running around playing soccer with a mask in them. It's going great. Uh, what we're asking folks to do, uh, the, the, the games are not, so Friday's game, not open to the public. Uh, we are asking that there just be two, uh, two fans per player. So if you're not associated with a player and you're not one of the two, uh, you're going to have to uh, watch our Facebook live feed. Uh, and we are going to try to put those games up on our uh, Facebook page where you can watch, uh, you know, a uh, a feed from uh, from the stands uh, and at least see what's what's happening. Uh, one quick question. Good morning. You're on the line with Jason Craner of Highland Public Schools. Good morning. And maybe you already talked about this and sorry if you did, but uh, are the schools getting new signs and why? Yeah. And the, all. I appreciate the call. If you drive by our schools, uh, you, you will see some construction going on with uh, with digital signs. Uh, these are being paid for out of uh, money that is intended for these types of upgrades that we needed to make. 
um, and, and they're a, a way to better communicate with our community about what's happening in those buildings. The, uh, the old signs, uh, I think everyone would agree, were completely outdated. They looked awful. They did not represent what we wanted to put out about our schools and the, the district. Um, the, that money though, to, to be clear, that money is not coming out of classroom instruction money. Uh, that is what we call a sinking fund money that had to be spent for facilities. And, and that's uh, why that's going up right now. They should be up pretty soon. There'll be nice digital signs, just like the one you see in front of the high school. Sounds good. Jason Craner, Highland Public Schools, thank you very much for joining us today on WHTC's Talk of the Town. We'll hear from you tomorrow on WHTC's Morning News for the weekly update on Highland Public Schools. And we'll put a link to Highland Public Schools' webpage when we put the podcast of our conversation on whtc.com. Jason, thank you. Thanks, Gary. And that is Jason Craner on 99.7 and 1450 WHTC.